Hello, everybody. I am Francesco Giorgetti, a postdoctoral researcher of Tusha University. This is a, an hour lecture about the uh, NCS APDL code, and uh, this is part of the intercourse uh, at Tusha University. In this lecture, we will deal with some basic uh, exercises uh, to introduce you to APDL uh, program language. Instead, in the last part of the of this lecture, an example related to nuclear fusion will be illustrated. Okay, this is the outline of this lecture. First of all, uh, I will give you some information, uh, basically uh, what every uh, APDL user have to know. And then we will go to our first uh, structural simulation. In particular, we will implement a cantilever beam with one dimensional formulation and making use of uh, in making a, a comparison of the numerical and analytical results. Then we will deal with uh, an, an electromagnetic uh, application. We will use, a, in this case, a two-dimensional uh, axisymmetric uh, formulation to represent a, a, a circular wire fed by a constant current. Also in this case, uh, the results uh, will be compared with those uh, computed analytically. The last example, as said before, uh, is instead related to uh, the evaluation of magnetic field uh, produced by the polar field coil system of demo uh, fusion reactor. And in this case, uh, we will use a, a, a three-dimensional uh, formulation, and we will see how to import uh, a mesh and uh, how to define the boundary conditions, making use of two different uh, approaches. Okay, the, the first important thing that uh, you must know is that uh, APDL is a dimensionless code. This means that you, you won't define the units and uh, the units uh, um, of the parameters inside the code. Uh, for this reason, be aware that uh, you will need to be consistent during the input uh, definition. For instance, if you define the geometry uh, with millimeter, the, the pressure has to be defined in Newton uh, over uh, square millimeter. And clearly the resultant stresses uh, will be in megapascal. Uh, also, APDL is a very powerful parametric code uh, the advantages uh, of this uh, uh, is that, uh, for example, you can reuse uh, 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 a code or, or part of the, the code in other applications. Uh, every APDL user have also to know, uh, and let me say very well, uh, how to browse uh, um, the command reference, uh, the element reference, and the theory reference uh, uh, text. Uh, you can find um, uh, this uh, uh, text uh, opening the APDL app. Uh, you have also to know that every action made uh, with graphical interface or um, uh, by means of the command line uh, is registered in a um, uh, log file, uh, as well as the every warning all errors uh, are written uh, inside a uh, uh, dot uh, error file, an error file. So uh, let me introduce the PDL product launcher interface. Uh, here uh, we can decide to open the graphical APDL interface that we will see later on, or uh, run the simulation in batch mode. Um, you can decide which kind of, uh, you can decide to use a graphical interface, the graphical interface or patch mode here in the upper part under simulation environment. Uh, we can define uh, also the working directory and the job name here in this part of the launcher interface. Uh, you can specify um, also um, the H H HPC uh, options here, uh, depending, of course, on the availability of uh, resources and licenses. 
Okay, uh, so uh, let's see how the APDL uh, graphical interface uh, uh, looks like. Uh, in the left part, uh, you can see the tree and the three main parts uh, of the tree are the uh, preprocessor in which you can define the geometry, uh, mesh, uh, materials, uh, element types, uh, and so on. Uh, the solution in which the solver parameters uh, can be defined uh, and the solution can be started. Uh, the general post-proc uh, in which the user uh, can deal with the post-processing uh, operations, such as uh, uh, graph, uh, control plots, uh, and so on. In the upper part, uh, we have the, the command uh, prompt in, in which uh, the user can write the, directly uh, the commands instead of using the graphical uh, interface. Uh, there is also um, the raise uh, hidden button that allows the, the user to, uh, to bring the, to, to the front the pop-up uh, windows. In the right part, instead, we have uh, the, the commands for the view manipulation of the model. Uh, and finally, in the bottom part, uh, you can see uh, the, uh, the active uh, entities, uh, uh, as for example, the, the material or the element type, etc. So uh, let's move to the first example, the, the one dimensional cantilever beam. So then let's open the mechanical APDL launcher. We can here browse the, the folder in which you want to um, launch the, the, the program. And we call the, this exercise, this exercise one, and then click the button run. Okay, at this point, uh, the, the APDL the graphical interface is open. Okay, uh, so let, let me show you again the presentation. Okay, uh, this is the structural application I said before. So we have a cantilever beam um, with the square section and uh, with the force uh, applied to the beam tip. Uh, <clears throat> the main uh, geometrical parameters uh, um, together with elastic properties uh, and the force value are reported uh, within this green rectangle. Um, let me recall now the uh, analytical uh, definitions of the beam deflection delta and the beam stress uh, um, sigma. Uh, delta is equal to the applied force multiplied by the cubic uh, length of the beam and divided by uh, three, divided by the uh, young modulus and uh, divided by the inertia. Uh, the inertia for a square section uh, is uh, equal to um, the, the length of the square side elevated to four and divided by 12. Uh, this is instead the, uh, the expression of, uh, to evaluate the, 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 the stress sigma. Uh, we, with the defined uh, parameters, uh, we will expect, expect um, a deflection uh, at the beam tip of two millimeters and a maximum stress value of uh, 600 megapascal. Okay, so we can start. Uh, oh, sorry. Okay, so for, for this application, uh, um, we will use uh, the, the, the beam uh, 188 element. This is a, a six degree, this element has a six degree of freedom. 
uh, namely uh, three displacements and three rotations per node. And is based uh, on the Timoshenko beam uh, theory. Um, the element, uh, uh, okay, um, this, uh, this element can be used uh, if the sl uh, slenderness uh, of the beam is greater than uh, 30. Um, and the, this is recommended in order to guarantee a good level of accuracy. Uh, with the defined parameters, uh, uh, this uh, we obtain uh, 460. So we are uh, well above the prescribed uh, value. Okay, let, let's start to model, let's say, APDL. Okay, so first of all, um, uh, we can choose the, uh, the, the analysis type, uh, but this is not mandatory. Okay, so um, uh, we have a, a structural um, um, analysis type. Then uh, we can define, we, we enter in the tree in the preprocessing, and we define the element type. So click on the help button. We go uh, to beam to node. 188. Then click OK. Uh, okay, let's see the, the, the element options. Uh, here you have, uh, uh, we, have we, we have to set uh, uh, six degree of freedom, namely, uh, as said before, uh, three displacements plus uh, uh, three rotations. Um, okay. Uh, now we, have, we don't have to uh, go in detail of these uh, other key options. So click OK and close. Uh, OK, now we have to define the, the element, the material properties. So uh, here we have to go to structural, linear, elastic, isotropic. Then we can uh, uh, insert the, the value of the young modulus and the Poisson ratio. For the uh, young modulus, we have to, to write uh, to remember remembering that we have the units in millimeter. So the, the young modulus for, for our general steel is to 200 gigapascal. Poisson ratio is 0 0.3, 0 0.3, sorry, 0 0.3. Okay, so we, we define the, the material properties. Okay, now we have uh, to define the, the beam section. So go to sections, beam, and common sections. Okay, this is the ID uh, that refers to this uh, section. Uh, we have a square section um, in which uh, here uh, we have to put 10 and 10 millimeter. Okay, perfect. Then um, now we have to define the, the geometry. So go to uh, modeling, create key points uh, on working plane. Uh, sorry, in an active uh, coordinate system this, um, that you can see also here in the bottom, the active, active coordinate system is the, uh, uh, the the num number zero, that is that is the uh, Cartesian uh, the Cartesian coordinate system. So um, we create the the first point with the ID number one in location zero zero zero. Click apply. Then we have to define the second point 
uh, the, the task coordinate uh, uh, zero. Uh, sorry. 100, 0, 0. Okay, so here we have the key point number one and key point number two. Then we have to define the, the line, straight line that uh, um, join uh, the two key previously created uh, key points. Once selected the two key points, uh, press uh, OK. Uh, okay, now we have to uh, define the uh, uh, the, um, the mesh size uh, applying the number of line uh, divisions. Uh, for the scope, uh, click to uh, size control, uh, manual size, lines, uh, all lines. Uh, and here we can uh, introduce the number of divisions that uh, for this example is uh, equal to 10. As you can see, the, the line has been uh, divided in 10 uh, with 10 divisions and that uh, will be results in um, 10 elements. Okay, so uh, we can mesh uh, the line uh, for, for this scope, go to mesh tool and uh, uh, select here lines and click uh, mesh. Okay, we select the, the line, press OK. Okay, so we have the, the, the mesh. Okay, to visualize the, the elements, uh, um, here in the command, in the prompt command, um, you can write uh, e plot. Okay, and to visualize the uh, the cross section, go to uh, plot controls uh, style um, style uh, size and shape. And uh, here, um, click here, and uh, you can on um, uh, this box uh, and press OK. And now you can see the, um, the, the elements and the cross section of the beam. OK. Uh, yeah, now we can close the mesh tool. Perfect. Uh, now, uh, okay, we can, uh, uh, the mesh uh, has been defined, so we can apply the, the boundary condition, conditions, uh, namely the constraints and the loads. Uh, the beam, um, as said before, is fixed uh, to this side, and uh, in, instead, uh, in, at the tip of the beam, we have uh, um, a force of, uh, a downward force uh, equal to 1000 Newton. So go to uh, modeling, uh, excuse me, go to loads, uh, define loads, apply structural displacement and select on key points. So we select this key point, then press OK. And we, uh, we have to fix uh, all the degree of freedom. Okay, uh, then we have to apply the, the force, uh, also in this case on key points. We select the key point on the beam tip, press okay. We have to, we want to apply um, downward uh, force uh, with respect to y axis with constant value and equal to minus 1000 Newton and press OK. Perfect, so uh, we can go in the solution uh, branch of the tree, go to solve current load step, press OK. OK, solution is done. Perfect, so 
we can um, go to the uh, post-processing. Uh, um, uh, now uh, let's have a, a look to, to the results. So uh, first of all, of all, we want to plot the, uh, want to do a contour plot of the uh, deformation. So um, go to nodal solution, dot solution, and uh, displacement vector sum. Okay, so you can see that there is a, a maximum displacement of 2.02. Uh, 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 instead, if we want to see the stress, go here and select the X component of stress. And as you can see, we have a, a value of five, uh, um, 560 uh, megapascal. And instead of a, a value of 600 was expected. So let me go to the presentation again. Okay, so uh, as I said before, um, uh, a value, a stress value of 600 was expected, um, but uh, with only uh, 10 elements along the, the beam length, uh, we obtain a stress of um, only uh, 560 megapascal. Uh, this means that uh, um, the, uh, the chosen mesh, mesh uh, discretization is uh, too coarse to, uh, to extrapolate the desired uh, value, the required value. Uh, so we can repeat uh, the analysis uh, with a finer mesh. And then we will find the value of the stress uh, closer to the um, closer to the analytical uh, one. Uh, often uh, the analyst uh, deal with a uh, uh, sensitivity analysis uh, in order to understand how many mesh elements uh, allow to have the required results uh, accuracy, uh, as you can see from this plot. Um, uh, in, in this case, the, the minimum elements uh, um, required to have the, um, the required accuracy, accuracy is the red point. Uh, because uh, over um, a certain number of the elements, uh, you will notice that you can notice that the results uh, do not change uh, in a significant way uh, if the number of the elements uh, are increased. Uh, so uh, finding the so-called uh, uh, plateau. Um, okay, so uh, for, for this application, maybe uh, 150 elements uh, will be enough uh, to find the, uh, as a trade-off uh, of the required accuracy and the number of elements. Okay, here in this slide, uh, um, I, I reported the, um, after a proper cleaning, uh, the commands are registered in the log file. Uh, you can uh, issue directly these commands uh, with a copy and paste operation in the, in the command line in order to repeat uh, all the graphical operation made so far. Let's have a look to the uh, log file to, to see how the log file uh, looks like. Go to list, files, log file, and here, you have all the operation performed in, with the graphical interface. You can see also um, uh, these comments that are related to um, uh, graphical uh, movement of the model. Okay, so um, now we, we can continue with the um, First, uh, electromagnetic application, uh, the, namely the uh, circular wire. So uh, let's consider uh, a circular wire with a minor radius of uh, 10 millimeter and a ma major radius of uh, 0.5 meter. 
uh, with the with the current uh, of uh, 100 uh, uh, kiloamps. Um, in the bottom right part of the slide uh, here, you can see the magnetic field evaluated uh, um, in an analytical way uh, and evaluated in the center along the, the axis uh, of, the, of the wire uh, along uh, that direction. Okay, so uh, in this slide, um, you can see uh, uh, how the geometry looks like. Uh, that we want the geometry that we want to implement uh, looks like. You can notice that in this case uh, we have to represent, uh, uh, in addition to the, the wire, also the, the vacuum, um, the vacuum region. It is very important uh, uh, to obtain uh, an high quality mapped mesh, uh, namely with the regular four side elements, uh, especially for EM applications. To obtain uh, such a um, high quality mesh, uh, we have to properly uh, generate uh, the geometry, uh, creating uh, regular surfaces uh, possible, uh, possibly made by four, four lines. Okay. Um, uh, for this uh, uh, application, uh, we resort to uh, plane two, uh, three, three, um, uh, two-dimensional element type with the capability to reproduce uh, also um, axisymmetric uh, EM uh, problem. Uh, with this element type, um, also a definition of a real constant uh, is needed in order to introduce a fraction of the 360 degree model. Uh, the degree of freedom, the degrees of freedom um, are the vector potential uh, AZ and uh, the degree of freedom volt uh, that is uh, needed to apply the, the current uh, to, to the wire. In uh, EM application, uh, we need to define uh, only the relative uh, permeability as a material uh, property. Uh, that for non ferritic materials is equal to one. Um, and um, for this is the case uh, of the steady state uh, uh, um, application. And instead for uh, transient application, you have also to define the resistivity of the, of the materials. Okay. So uh, uh, in the definition of the geometry, um, uh, we can exploit the, the symmetry of the model, thus implementing only an half of the whole geometry and thus use uh, uh, mirror operations. Uh, we can also use uh, the provided uh, code here. Uh, in the, you can use the, the provided code in the red box to define the, the key points. Uh, we can find uh, the command uh, to, to generate uh, the, the key points uh, in the command uh, reference. Uh, let's see how to, to do this. Okay, so let's start a new, a new project. So go we'll to uh, clear and start new don't read the file and okay. Click on yes. Perfect. So in order to uh, find how, um, uh, how can uh, the, the, in order to find the uh, key points uh, um, command, go to help topics. Okay. And this is uh, the, how the, uh, ANSYS uh, help uh, uh, looks like. And go uh, to mechanical APDL and then go to command reference. And, and now we have to uh, search the uh, K command. As you can see, 
um, the command k is used to define a, a key point. So the um, you, to to define a key point, you have to uh, issue k comma npt that uh, stands for uh, the the key point number. Uh, X, Y, and Z are the um, key point uh, location in the um, active uh, coordinate system. So, okay. Sorry. Okay. Just one second. Okay. As you can see, I have already prepared the, um, the, the code. So uh, I will do uh, copy and paste operations uh, um, uh, all, uh, I will do copy and paste operations and I will explain you uh, all the commands. So first of all, uh, I, I want to define the uh, par model parameters. So copy and paste, and then here in uh, parameters, scalar parameters, uh, we can find uh, all the defined uh, parameters. Okay, so let's define the element type. Okay, we have to go to uh, magnet magnetic vector uh, quad um, a one quad eight nodes uh, two hundred thirty three. Then press OK. Go to options. Uh, the the key option uh, for this element type, the key option one, is related to the, the element degree of freedom. And you want to uh, use a, um, a vector potential uh, plus volt degrees of freedom. Then, uh, as element behavior, we have to put axis symmetric and electromagnetic force uh, calculation. Uh, we have to put uh, Lorentz and then press OK. OK. Uh, I, uh, I defined the element type uh, with the graphical interface, but, but you can also use uh, these commands uh, to, to define, uh, to do the same operations. You can also have a look to the a log file here. As you can see, we have the element type uh, uh, number one, uh, that is the plane 233. And these are the, all the elements uh, key options that I reported also here. And that you have uh, also in the, the presentation. Okay, so um, uh, yes, okay. And now we have to define the materials. The, the command used to define the materials is a MP. And we want to define two materials, one for the, uh, the cable and one for the uh, vacuum or air, it's the same. Okay, um, perfect. So, uh, okay, let's move on. Um, defining the, the key points. So, do a copy and paste operation. There you see the, the all the defined uh, key points. Then uh, we have to define the lines. That uh, the line to define uh, um, a line between two key points, uh, you have to use the 
uh, the command L. Let's see the command reference. As you can see, you have to define the first key point, the second key point, and uh, you can also speci uh, already specify the, uh, the number of divisions um, that uh, uh, will be uh, then defined the, the mesh size. So here we have the, all the lines uh, defined between the key points uh, previously issued. The command L, L plot, uh, you can see the, the lines. Okay. So, uh, okay. We want to now um, to, uh, to define um, this, uh, uh, this arc and, um, sorry, to do this uh, um, uh, because of uh, 180 degree arc is not allowed with the uh, uh, LARC command. Um, a possible uh, workaround to define uh, this, uh, this arc uh, is to uh, create uh, um, two 90 degrees uh, arcs and then combine them with uh, the command L comb here. So we, first of all, we have to create these uh, two arcs, two 90 degrees uh, arcs. And then we want to combine this arc, uh, this arcs in in, uh, in a unique uh, arc. Then we have to split uh, this arc uh, with these two lines, and in the end uh, we have to create three arcs: uh, one, two, and three. Okay. So let's see how to do this. Okay, let's create the the arcs, okay, then combine the arcs. Then we can use the lsbl command to split uh, uh, lines uh, with, uh, with arcs. Excuse me, uh, yes, yeah, so split lines with, with arcs. And this is what we'll what is obtained. As you can see here, uh, now we have two, two lines, uh, the green one and the orange one. Then we have to recreate the three arcs. Copy and paste the first arc, the second one, and the third one. Okay, uh, as you can see, mm, then uh, some lines, uh, uh, I've not uh, yet the, defined the, the number of divisions. Uh, to do this, uh, uh, let so select the, the lines without uh, divisions and uh, use the command le sides to, to apply uh, the, the number of divisions uh, to, to these lines. Okay, so we have to repeat this operation uh, also for these lines, for the arcs, use the command le, le sides. Okay, and also for the internal line previously split. And okay, copy and paste. And here, here we are. Okay. All cell is the command to select uh, everything in the model. Okay. So um, we, the key points uh, and the lines uh, have been defined. And uh, now we have to, to, uh, to um, we have to the, the generate the, the areas. So uh, first of all, we have to copy and uh, we, 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 will, we will proceed uh, uh, generating, first of all, the areas related to the, the cable. So uh, 
in such a way we can apply the, the materials number one, the material number one to, to the cable. To do this, we can use the AATT command that allow uh, the user to apply uh, the material uh, uh, number one to, to this area, to, to these uh, areas. And um, the material properties will be uh, also passed to all entities depending to these uh, areas. So uh, even the mesh. Okay, uh, let's move to the, the other areas of the model. Okay, now issue a plot, a plot. Okay, now we are with the select from the full, from the whole model, the, the, the area with material number one. And we apply to the, these, uh, um, to the, these active uh, areas, the, the material number two. Okay, now write all cell. Go to plot controls numbering. Here in element uh, attribute numbering, uh, select uh, uh, material numbers uh, and here uh, color only. Then press OK. As you can see, now you have um, uh, the, the areas uh, colored by the materials number. So we have the, the cable and the, and the vacuum. So we have now to, to mesh, uh, we can now mesh the, the model. So use the command a mesh with uh, comma hole. And as you can see now we meshed all the model. Okay, now we, we have to, to reflect the, the model um, um, around the, uh, in the Y, direction to do this to do this uh, we have first of all uh, uh, to compress uh, the the mesh num the numbering of the the mesh and to uh, we have to get also the uh, the number the maximum defined the num the maximum uh, defined uh, node number uh, looking at the uh, scalar parameters, uh, you can see that uh, uh, this is the, the number, the maximum defined ID for the mesh nodes. So to, to reflect the, the mesh with respect to Y axis, we have to issue, first of all, the command nsim uh, and then the command uh, esim. So we the, first of all, it will be reflected the, the nodes and then the, the elements. Okay, so issue e plot. Okay, now we have to, uh, to merge the nodes in, in the, uh, this part here the, with respect to the reflection axis because in, during the uh, uh, during the, the mirroring operation, we have duplicated the nodes uh, here uh, at uh, y equal to zero. So we select all the nodes uh, with coordinate uh, y equal to zero, and uh, we perform a, a merging of the node using the command num mr mrg uh, comma nodes. Okay, so we, uh, the mesh is now complete. Uh, we can apply the boundary conditions. Uh, the boundary conditions are the vector potential, uh, potential uh, AZ equal to zero um, applied to uh, the boundary of the model. So to select the, the nodes, uh, and external nodes of the model, we have to write n cell comma 
uh, s, that means uh, uh, select from full, and comma uh, x. And with this command, uh, we we select uh, only the nodes, uh, the external nodes. Then use the command um, uh, d, that is for the constraint to constraints uh, application uh, to apply constraint to two nodes. So d all that stands for uh, apply the, um, the constraint to uh, all active nodes, uh, in this case, only, only the external nodes. Uh, and we want to uh, have that uh, az is equal to zero. Okay, so uh, we have to define, uh, as I said before, a real constant. So this, is, this is a fraction of the 360 degree, and uh, we choose, uh, in this case, uh, pi over eight in which pi is defined uh, as uh, uh, a cos uh, minus one. So in the command error, instead that we define the real constant. Okay. Now uh, we have to select the, the material, uh, the, the elements and the nodes of the, of the cable. So here we have the, the uh, materials and the, the elements uh, and nodes of the cable. Uh, and to fit the wire, we have to, uh, we have firstly to connect uh, all the volt uh, degree of freedom uh, of the wire nodes uh, to a master node, uh, and then apply to the master node the, the current uh, through the F command. To do this, uh, we have uh, to uh, uh, use the, find the, the the minimum ID number of the active uh, nodes, and then use the command uh, CP to, to connect the volt degree of freedom to a master node. That in this case is the N min, let's see the value of N, N min, it's the node number one. Uh, so this, uh, this command uh, connected the degree of uh, the volt degree of freedom to node, node number one. And then use the command F, that is uh, to apply a force to a node, to, um, to the node with the ID and mean. Um, we want to apply arms equal and with value uh, I, that is the current that fit the, the wire. Okay. Okay, perfect. So we can go through the solo and branch of the tree and solve the problem. Okay, solution is done. Oh, I'm sorry, there was a problem. I forgot to select everything before launching the, the solution. So be aware that uh, before you uh, the solution is um, launched, uh, you have to select everything uh, in the model. So you can write uh, again solve the solve command. Okay. Okay. So now we can do some process processing operations. Uh, first of all, uh, you can plot the magnetic flux density vector sum. Okay, the, 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 the plot is uh, more or less as expected. Okay, um, then we want to plot the, uh, the man magnetic field on the uh, wire axis. To do this, uh, we have to create a path uh, in which the, the magnetic, magnetic field will be interpolated. So uh, we create, define a path uh, by location and um, uh, we call this path, path underscore one, number point two. Okay. So the, the first uh, point uh, is uh, as a uh, coordinates zero, zero and uh, minus one. 
Okay, the second point as coordinate zero, zero and one. Okay, was, uh, we can uh, um, plot the path. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, okay, I have to define the path in this wide direction. So define path by location. Okay, the first point the has location zero, minus one, zero, and the second point zero, one, zero. Okay. Plot path, okay. Now we have to map onto path uh, the uh, some of the magnetic uh, flux density, then press okay. And we can now plot uh, the path uh, items on graph B sum, okay. And here we have the, the, the plot of the my magnetic field on the y axis. Uh, okay, now um, I return for a while the presentation. Okay, here you can see also that uh, you can expand the solution with an axisymmetric model. You can expand the solution for uh, the circumferential uh, direction using, uh, using these commands. You can also plot the two to uh, the flux uh, lines. Uh, can you uh, also plot uh, uh, the magnetic field as uh, ISO level uh, lines, as you can see from the right uh, plot? And uh, to do these uh, these plots, you can use the the comments reported in these um, uh, in these plots. Okay, so uh, here in this slide, you have the comparison of the analytical and the, uh, the results obtained by, with the uh, NCS PDL. As you can see, there is a, a very good matching between uh, these results. And uh, to export the, the solution, you can use uh, uh, these uh, comments in which uh, you uh, substantially, uh, you have to define um, Oh, so excuse me, you have to define the, uh, um, a matrix in which uh, you, uh, you can write the, the position of, of the path points and the, uh, for each uh, path point, uh, the, the value of the magnetic field. Um, then you, you can use these commands to, uh, to write, uh, uh, to write a, a text file. Uh, called uh, B underscore path uh, underscore APDL. Uh, be aware that uh, you can and uh, you cannot uh, uh, um, directly copy and paste uh, the, this part of the of the code, uh, namely the, the, the related to the uh, writing uh, operations. Uh, but uh, you have to do this uh, uh, reading uh, uh, text by text files with the, these commands, uh, lines, or you can, uh, you, you have to use the, uh, the graphical interface. Okay, so go through the, um, uh, now we can move to the last example that uh, is the evaluation of magnetic field uh, produced by the demo PF coils uh, resorting to three-dimensional formulation. Okay, here we have the, you have the, the currents applied to the PF coils, uh, plasma, and central solenoid at the end of flat top instant of plasma scenario. Uh, for this case, uh, um, uh, we uh, we start uh, we start from um, um, already meshed uh, um, region, uh, but you, you have to keep in mind the the following mesh uh, feature. Uh, first, uh, um, on the uh, on the axis, uh, you have to uh, um, uh, to have only wedge elements. Uh, the, the region have to be uh, four or five times the maximum coil dimension. Uh, the coil elements uh, have to be um, 
aligned in a cylindrical coordinate system and uh, for a proper current density in applications. Also, you have to um, control these, these uh, mesh, meshing parameters, in particular the, skew, the maximum value of the skewness have to be uh, uh, 0.7 and the maximum value of the warping factor have to be 0.14. Okay, um, so uh, now we'll see how to import uh, um, uh, a mesh uh, uh, from uh, that file uh, using, using input, input com, the input command. Uh, then we have to uh, compress uh, um, uh, all the materials uh, and the and the element type. Uh, in fact, you have to know that uh, the, this mesh has been uh, generated inside the ANSYS workbench, uh, where um, the materials, uh, a material and uh, element type is, is created for each for each uh, geometrical solid. By the way, uh, we don't need to have uh, so many materials uh, or element types, um, uh, also because uh, inside the ANSYS APDL, uh, uh, we haven't anymore the geometry, but we have all the uh, other mesh. So the first operation to, to change the element type um, is, is to change the element type from the one uh, that we have from ANSYS workbench to uh, this, uh, the element type uh, solid 9017. 97. Um, this element uh, has a man magnetic vector potential formulation uh, with up to five degrees of freedom uh, per node. In our case, we have to specify only three degrees of freedom, uh, namely uh, the vector potential um, uh, AX, AY, and AZ. Uh, uh, we can do this uh, putting the key option number one equal uh, to zero. Uh, okay, then we will compress uh, the uh, materials and we, we we want to define uh, uh, just two materials one for the coins and one for the vacuum uh, as already performed with the element types uh, we can delete uh, all the un unused materials and compress the denumeration okay let's do this operation with the apdl okay so clear and start new Okay, let's open the, the code. Okay. <clears throat> Perfect. So with the command input, we can uh, <clears throat> read the, the mesh file. Okay, it's clear because uh, uh, I renamed the, the mesh, the, the, this file uh, without underscore three. Okay, so try again. Uh, sorry, I have to copy and paste again. Okay, select all, key plot. Okay, as you can see, you have the, the mesh. Okay. Let's uh, color the elements by the material um, number. Okay. So first of all, we want to create, as I said before, the element type and delete just one element type and delete all other element. Just to have a look here, you can see you have uh, 116 element type. Okay, copy and paste. Now you can see we have just one element type. Um, okay, we do the same for the, the material. In particular, we want to select all the coins. Uh, we can use the command um, cm cell, uh, that is, uh, um, can, you can find the component manager. Uh, that, that are the, um, substantially are um, uh, a set of elements uh, uh, that, that the user can recall uh, 
um, in an easy way. Uh, for example, PF1, if we select PF1, you can see that the, the program uh, select from pool only the, the elements are, um, of the polar field coin one. It is a uh, uh, name at selection have been uh, defined uh, inside, uh, already defined inside the ANSYS workbench. But you can define a new uh, common and uh, a new uh, command uh, man component manager uh, also inside the ANSYS APDL. So I want to select uh, all the coils uh, as well as the plasma. We have to activate the coordinate system number one, that is uh, the cylindrical one, and then issue the command emodif to uh, modify the, to update the element coordinate system in the uh, reference system number one. Okay. Um, I forgot that you can use the element the coordinate system number one, but we can, okay. So uh, we have to return in the coordinate system number zero, the Cartesian coordinate system. We, we have to define a new coordinate system with uh, number 12, then zero, excuse me, one, that uh, zero is for a coordinate, uh, Cartesian coordinate system, one is for cylindrical coordinate system, then the position of the uh, origin of the coordinate system, that is zero, zero, zero. Okay, so now we, we activate the coordinate system 12, and now we have to align the element coordinate system, the coil element coordinate system in the cylindrical coordinate system number 12. Okay, now we can modify the material of the coils, issuing the command isl. This command, uh, we select, uh, uh, we invert the, the selection, we modify the element type, the material, in material number 63. And now we can delete uh, all the unused material. Okay, select all, e plot. Let's see the material properties, material models. Something wrong. Let's repeat the. Okay. Um, okay. In this case, it's not necessary to create uh, two elements type. Uh, however, um, now let's define the. Um, I'm sorry, I want to understand that what's going wrong. Materials models. Okay, let's define a new material with AD1, in which uh, we define the only the relative permeability equal to one. Okay, so write emodif. Okay, you have to select first of all the, the coils. Emodif, emodif all uh, mat material, comma one. Okay. Now issue the command num compress material. Okay. 
uh, we have to delete also this uh, edit delete the material number two. We want to recompress again the materials. Okay. Select all, e plot. Perfect. Uh, okay. So now we have to apply the currents, uh, the, 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 the surfaces. Uh, uh, the surfaces uh, uh, orthogonal to the currents uh, flowing, uh, and then the uh, current densities that are the, the currents divided by the, the um, surfaces previously evaluated. Okay, then we can move to boundary conditions um, to apply the the. Uh, the boundary conditions. Uh, uh, okay, uh, first of all, uh, we have to apply the, the current densities. To apply the current densities, uh, we have to use the command BFE. Now let's have a look to BFE command. BFE that stands uh, uh, for element body force load. So uh, we have BFE, comma, LM, that are the elements that selected the uh, in the graphical interface, and the lab is uh, the label of the that in our case we have to use uh, the, the current density, and uh, and then we have to as the lock uh, um, we have to put the value of two because the, the currents uh, uh, flows in the circumferential direction. That is the, the second uh, axis. Uh, we have in a cylindrical coordinate system, we have uh, um, R, uh, theta, and Z. So we, are, we want that the, the current to flow in the um, circumferential direction, that is the number two. So we can use this common BFE to apply the current density uh, to the polar field coils. The, one, two, three, four, five, and six. You can use this um, do loop uh, to reduce the, the, the code. And uh, you can uh, put a, a variable, uh, the variable high of the loop here between the, uh, the percentage symbols in order to um, recall uh, every time the, the related uh, polar field coin. So, Copy and paste. We have to apply also the, the current density to the uh, central solenoid modules and also to the plasma. Okay, concerning the, the boundary conditions, uh, uh, we have to apply different, different uh, constraints uh, on the axis, uh, on the lateral uh, surfaces, uh, on the uh, external surface. So uh, move to the coordinate system number one, and we select the, the nodes on the axis and plot. We have, you have to rotate the, the nodes in um, the coordinate system number one. And we have to apply um, on the axis that uh, uh, the vector potential um, uh, and to be equal to zero. Instead, on the lateral model surfaces, we have, uh, we have to uh, uh, specify that uh, um, uh, being the, being the, uh, the, the flux, uh, uh, the magnetic field uh, poloidal, uh, um, we, we will uh, we uh, want to have the uh, an orthogonal component of the flux because it is a, uh, for each section uh, the, the polar field is uh, uh, parallel to the considered uh, section. So um, uh, we have to apply um, that uh, the vector potential uh, potential a x and a z equal to zero. Um, uh, leaving free the, the circumferential uh, um, component. Okay, yeah, you can see I create uh, the component uh, 
uh, nodes uh, lateral of the lateral, lateral nodes and uh, um, on the external surface uh, uh, as a far field condition we can use uh, the we can put uh, the vector potential equal to, to zero okay so uh, we can now solve the the problem Okay, solution is done. Okay, we can plot, uh, um, can do a contour plot of the magnetic field, magnetic flux density. Okay, as you can see, uh, we have a maximum value of around uh, 11 uh, Tesla. And uh, the, the maximum field is uh, inside the central solenoid uh, as expected. Uh, you can also uh, let me return to the. Uh, you can also plot the um, uh, the ISO lines. Click uh, by clicking on the on the contour levels with the right mouse button. Contour properties and activate vector lines. Click with the right bottom on the, on the screen, replot. Okay, as you can see, you have a plot with the contour lines. And uh, you, you can also uh, do a vector plot of the, uh, for, for instance, of the current densities. Okay, let's move to another. As you can see here, we have the, the current densities uh, vectors. And you can use this um, visualization in order to verify that the, the currents have been correctly applied. Uh, okay. Um, then that's all. Uh, thank you for your kind attention.